The morning is early, the air is cold, and the campus is silent. This is how a long day on the road starts for basketball players at Eastern Oregon University. There is no fan send-off, no goodbye parade, and no luxurious accommodations. There's only a modest bus that will drive them for a long 10 hours to their destination. The 450 mile road covers many different terrains from the city to the open country in many difficult weather conditions. However, none compare to the difficult task that awaits the Mountaineers once the drive is over. The team will be attempting to beat Oregon Tech at home in the Cascade Conference Championship. Eastern has never won a Cascade Conference Championship and hasn't beat Oregon Tech at home since February 16, 1979. Senior guard Thomas McCarthy wasn't yet alive the last time Eastern beat Oregon Tech at home. However, his father Kevin was, and he just so happened to be on the Eastern basketball team that beat Oregon Tech. Thomas is also just 29 points shy of passing his father, who is 7th on Eastern's all-time leading scorers list. How often does he bring that up with you, and does he make it seem like it's an easy thing to do? Uh, he brings it up somewhat. It's, um, he just knows it's really tough to play in OIT, and uh, what he really brings up a lot is the scoring record and how there was no threes when he played. So, you know, and that's when they wore belts with their shorts too, so. <laughs> well, I guess we have the luxury of watching the tape that you guys know. But if you look at it, the two games played against Oregon Tech, both decided by what we think is breakdowns in transition defense. In both games, we were tied with about five minutes to go. Both times, they ran away at the end of the game, um, basically converting missed shots into easy baskets. And then, looking back at the tape, there's basically the whole game, they're getting to go down and get four on five situations. They don't necessarily convert the way that we try to, like three on two. So they move to the point, six, three, five points, four rebounds, almost three assists. 38% from the floor, okay from three. Um, they'll start him, they'll let him play point, but he can move the uh, no, no DOU team has ever won that event. And now, I'm not saying that to uh, make it bigger than what it is, but uh, it would be a nice little thing to add onto your resume. If we were going to make history at EOU and not be average, these are the type of things that you got to do. And nothing would be funner uh, than to snap their streak and uh, send them into Branson on a losing one. Alright? I was kind of thinking that by now. Mounties, one, two, three. Mounties! <laughs> The team heads to the Oregon Tech gym for a pre-game shoot-around. You don't have to look hard to be reminded of what Oregon Tech's basketball team has accomplished in the past. Their coach, Danny Miles, has been with the team for over 40 years and has compiled over 900 wins in two national championships. Eastern lost both regular season games to Oregon Tech by an average of 9 points this season. Even with the odds and statistics piled against them, the Mountaineers remain calm and confident during the shoot-around. Guys won tonight. It would be the uh, the biggest win of the season for you, and maybe the biggest of your career. Yeah, it yeah, it would. I've never won a, uh, any kind of conference title, or championship, first in conference, none of that. So this would be a good day to get that. Uh, feel good to actually have a championship under the belt, somewhat. So. Has Coach brought up that uh, that streak that they're on right now? They've won 55 home games in a row, and EOU has not won here since 1979. Does he ever bring that up? <laughs> he doesn't bring. Or we knew about it last game, or last time we came down here. So 
we kind of know about the street and we're just trying to just break that. That's all we want to do is just be the ones to break it. You know? uh, you've been here now five years. Would this be the biggest one of your career if you win tonight? Yeah, hands down, easily, for sure. Especially uh, if we win, we get to cut down their nets. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Some say it's hardest not to be nervous in front of a loud crowd. Others can make the argument that there's nothing worse than the pregame silence. And the one thing I can say with a fair amount of certainty, everybody plays hard. It's not going to be about that. Okay. What it's going to be about is the team that executes the best. The team that plays the most together. The team that puts ego aside and individual agendas and puts the focus on what our group needs to do to win. That team will have the best chance to win the championship. You guys get up there, get a great warm up, but let's have fun. You only get to be in the championship so many times and old guys like Tom, their clock's running out, all right? So let's go get this one, all right? Mounties, one, two, three. Mounties. Finds a wide open Thurman in the corner, and his three is good. Nope, oh, they're going to call it a two. Here's Johnson. He'll take a shot from the elbow, and it's good. Nice shot. Almost loses it again. Now finds a skip pass to Cody. Cody's going to drive in. Seven on the shot clock. McCarthy takes a step in from the three-point line and hits it. 45 left in the first half. Peterson drives in. Layup is good. Nice take by Trevor. Oh, like he's definitely extending that three-point defense. Nice spin by Cottle. He'll go in. Nice shot by Josh Cottle on the spin move. Josh Cottle gets on the wing to Jason Mum. His three-pointer is good, and the Mountaineers have a lead. Seven. Cottle drives in the paint. He's going to go all the way to the basket. Nice move by Josh Cottle. Oh, no good. Breathe on to Mum. Mum will go up, and he's going to be fouled. Count the basket. 24. Three-pointer on the way for Jason Mum. It's good. Nice shot, Jason. 33-27, back to a six-point lead. On the shot clock, Johnson looks inside to Mum. Finds Mum. Mum will go up. Shot off the glass, and good. Mountaineers tie it up. Anthony Brown takes the handoff. Now a handoff to Cook. Here's Ransom. He'll spin. Nice move by Jeff Ransom. 41-37. Cottle crosses over on Brent Johnson. Now finds Ransom on the baseline. Back to Cottle. He's got a layup. He goes up and hits it. 45-41. You know, trailing by four at halftime on the road at number eight OIT. 35 left here in the regulation, 47-41, OIT leads by six. Here's Johnson in the paint. Jamar shot up and in. Nice shot by Jamar. Thurman's going to take a three, and he hits it. Here's Foster at the top of the key. Picked up by Brent Johnson. His three-pointer is in. It's no good. Tip ball. Brown's got the put back and in. Here's Thurman out of Johnson on the wing. Johnson, nice pass to Mum, and he'll go up and hit the layup. Great pick and roll there. Thurman sliding into uh, our table. Clark's going to drive in, and he's got a layup, and he hits it. Thurman fakes the three, now passes inside to Ranstrom. Nice move by Jeff, up and under is in, and the Mountaineers trail by four, 59-55. Spins against McCarthy, now kicks it out. Smith in the corner for three, it's in. Cottle back to Cook, three-pointer on the way, and it's in. That's what we need to see. No foul call. Brent Johnson gets the ball, he'll go up, his shot is in. His shot blocked. Here's Cottle, he'll go up and he'll hit it. Cottle right. Johnson, Brent Johnson will go up, and his shot rolls in. with three. Jamar Johnson pull up is good. No Mountaineers, no miss. We'll drive in the paint, his floater up no good. Rebound to Josh Cottle. All the way down the court to Jamar Johnson, he's got a layup, and the Mountaineers trail by one. 
Cook finds Connell. Connell drives in the paint, goes all the way in and hits it. Here's David Clark. J.C. Cook almost comes away with a steal. Now Foster has it. 17 on the shot clock. Foster, three is good. Three threes tonight. Shot is short, no good. Rebound to Brent Johnson. He's been a horse inside. Outside, here's Foster with a wide open three. And he hits it. Good three. Here's Brent Johnson. He'll bring in the key. His shot up and in. Thompson oh. Carthy shot is good. Inside looks to Simmons. Simmons will drive in the paint. His pull up is good. Killian Woods sets the pick. Now McCarthy will pass to Jamar Johnson. Connell on the wing. Drives in the paint. Connell fakes. Now will go up and his shot is in. The Mountaineers fought hard, trading baskets with Oregon Tech until the very end. A late 8-0 run by Oregon Tech proved to be too much to overcome. The Mountaineers lost for the 30th consecutive time at Oregon Tech, 83-88. Hi everybody and welcome into the Victory Sports Network NAIA Division II Men's Basketball Bracket Announcement. I thank each and every one of you for joining us here tonight as we get set for the NAIA Division II Basketball Tournaments, which start up next week, Wednesday night, actually, excuse me, Wednesday morning at large number two. The bottom half of bracket number four sees Cedarville of Ohio taking on Eastern Oregon. Cedarville qualifies as the American Mideast Tournament runner-up, while Eastern Oregon qualifies as the Cascade Collegiate Tournament runner-up. Eastern Oregon. The Mountaineers qualified as the 10th seed in the NAIA Division II National Tournament. They would go on to win their first round game against Cedarville University, 82-74. However, the very next day they would fall in the second round to Oklahoma Wesleyan, 63-78. The team ended its 2010-2011 season tied for the most victories in a single season in the program's 81-year history. The Mountaineers also managed to break an astonishing 17 school records this season. The season will go down as one of the best ever in Eastern Oregon University's basketball history.